Steel is a commodity used in a vast range of artifacts and products that help make up modern life. It is found in the construction of the tallest buildings and longest bridges to more mundane items like cutlery and corkscrews. We use it in the vehicles we drive, the tools used to repair them, and almost every seagoing vessel afloat today. Vast tonnages and types of steel products are transported by sea around the world every year. These include steel coils, coiled steel wire rods, steel plate, large diameter steel or cast iron pipe, small diameter steel pipe, steel piling, steel beam or girders, steel profile, steel mesh, steel angle and bulb steel reinforcement bar, i.e. rebar, steel channels, steel column, steel strips, steel sections and forgings, steel prefabricated structure, steel bundles, other finished metal products, ductile iron pipe, tin plate, unfinished steel or other metal products, steel slab, steel billets, steel blooms, steel swarf, steel ingot, steel scrap, and pig iron. The high density of most steel cargoes may be a hazard to the ship's structure. Serious structural damage may be caused during loading and during transportation. If load limitations are exceeded during loading, deck and or tank plating and under deck structures can be damaged. Heavy steel cargo low down in the ship can create a large GM or metacentric height. The resultant very quick roll period when the ship is in a seaway can also damage the ship structure. Improperly secured cargo may shift and cause damage to the ship's structure as well as a loss of stability and or a list. There are two principal outcomes required to ensure that there is no movement of any steel cargo. One, the stow must be compact and free of voids. Two, all sections of the cargo are securely lashed. There is great variety of different shapes and lengths of steel products carried aboard ship. This makes a standardized block stowage difficult to achieve, even if holds are properly square or rectangular. This is where dunnage is once again invaluable. Any unavoidable gaps between packages or items of cargo must be filled using dunnage of appropriate strength. Cargo securing is principally frictional. Wood dunnage used for chalking and blocking cargo helps provide friction. The compact stow helps ensure that cargo cannot move even if static frictional forces may be overcome. The addition of lashings creates additional vertical pressure in the stow, enhancing static frictional forces. The lashing systems must be comprehensive, direct loop lashings for each item or bundle of steel cargo. Over-the-top lashing systems should be avoided. Care must be taken to ensure that forces are distributed evenly on all of the lashings used. Certain steel cargoes, especially project cargoes, require that each lashing must be secured to a proper designated lashing point in the ship structure. General cargo vessels and other ships specifically designed for the carriage of brake bulk cargoes usually have sufficient lashing points. If additional securing points are needed, then pad eyes can be welded to appropriate structures. Bulk carriers may require additional pad eyes or other lashing points to be fitted. This may take place before cargo is loaded or during loading depending on how the cargo is stacked. The use of flat metal steel bands is recommended for lashing of steel cargo where possible. The bands are cheap, simpler to thread through the coils or other cargo, and do not require turnbuckles or bulldog clips. 
These bands are tightened using pneumatic tools and or manual tools, and the bands reach their maximum elongation immediately. At least two crimp seals should be used in each joint in the bands. In order to be fully effective, these systems must be properly utilized. Users must be trained and the pneumatic or manual tightening equipment be properly maintained to manufacturer's requirements. Wire ropes, steel chains with load binders and other lashing materials will require attention to ensure that they are as close as possible to their elastic limit before sailing. They will require more frequent checks during the voyage to ensure that they have not slackened off. Timber placed under lashings can help protect the cargo and lashings from abrasion. Where loops or joints are formed using turnbuckles and bulldog clips, care must be taken to ensure that these are correctly used. The turnbuckles should be such that they have sufficient room for retightening during the voyage. A wire rope loses 30% of its strength in way of any bulldog clips used. This must be factored in when calculating loads. Where access is possible, frequent checks should be carried out during the voyage. Any broken banding or strapping must be replaced as soon as possible.